In this video, I'm gonna show you how I created this compact AI wildlife monitor, which is a mini version of my original larger Raspberry Pi powered AI wildlife monitor. I've made a few videos now about this concept and I've had a lot of interest from people wanting to start to build their own. Now the original version, which had a Raspberry Pi 5 and Halo AI accelerator, cost quite a bit and was a bit inaccessible for some. So I decided to create this mini version, which is not only a lot more compact, but it's also a lot cheaper. Now, if you've seen those other videos, you'll know that when I'm talking about an AI wildlife monitor, I'm talking about the fact that we're running an AI or neural network based object detection model on the device itself so that the device itself can detect and identify various animal species without the need of some external cloud compute so that we can deploy them in remote locations and detect, identify and log various animal species there and potentially also use low bandwidth communication to transmit the detection data. Now, as I said, in that original version, we used the Halo 8 AI Neural Network Accelerator, which has 26 tops of AI compute. At the heart of this mini version, we're using the Raspberry Pi AI camera, which uses the Sony IMX500 intelligent vision sensor, which not only has a camera sensor, but also a small neural network accelerator or neural processing unit. The accelerator on the camera is quite a bit less powerful than the Halo 8, and we are limited to only processing images at a 640 by 480 resolution, but I found that's good enough for a lot of applications. Because all the heavy lifting in terms of image processing is done on the camera itself, the computer we attach it to can be a lot less powerful in this case, I'm using the Raspberry Pi 02W, which is not only a lot smaller, but a lot cheaper than the Raspberry Pi 5. In order to create a small, compact and portable device, I'm using the Witty Pi 4 L3V7 with a custom battery pack to power the device. To create the custom battery pack, I used this mini spot welder that I recently bought to create larger battery packs for my original wildlife monitor. I also custom designed and 3D printed this case to hold the batteries as I spot welded them together in parallel and added a battery protection circuit. I'm relying on the battery management chip on the Witty Pi to charge and monitor the batteries and the combined capacity of the battery pack is 10 amp hours. The Witty Pi not only provides power, but it also has a real time clock that can be used to set the time on the Raspberry Pi and also allows us to create a scheduling loop so that we can set the device to turn on in the morning and turn off at night. And that's important because at the moment, the AI camera has an infrared filter so we can't use it at night with an infrared illumination. Also, the Raspberry Pi Zero doesn't have a real-time clock itself, so if we want to get accurate timestamps for our detections in remote locations away from a Wi-Fi network, we're going to need that clock. I've measured the power consumption of the device to be about 2 watts, and with our battery pack providing us about 37 watt hours of power, that gives us a battery life of about 18 hours. That's pretty good for a Raspberry Pi powered project, but if we were to compare it to something like this off-the-shelf trail camera, it's not that impressive. These things get battery lives of about several months, but that's mainly due to the fact that they're not actually using the camera to do the detection. Most of the time the device is off or in a deep sleep mode, and they're relying on this passive infrared or PIR sensor to detect hot moving objects. And once it does, it switches on the device and starts recording for a set period of time. While this does give us an extended battery life, it limits us to only being able to detect things that can be detected by the PIR sensor. In situations where maybe the animal's really far away, or it's a small animal or something like an insect that the PIR sensor can't detect, well, we can't really use it. By using the camera with modern deep neural networks, we can really detect and log anything that shows up in the image. In order to house the whole thing, I've custom designed and 3D printed this enclosure, which has these clip hinges so you can open and close the device very easily. And this houses the battery, the Raspberry Pi, and the camera. To further ensure the whole thing's watertight, I've used a liquid gasket to create this little seal, and this little groove in the lid compresses onto that so that it's watertight. It also has this separate shroud on the front that you can 3D print separately and glue in place. And that shroud also houses the little acrylic viewport for the camera so that the whole thing is waterproof and watertight. On the back, there's also these little slots where we can insert a Velcro strap so we can mount it onto a tree or a pole. I'll make the STL for this enclosure available online and the link will be in the description. I'm still making updates and changes to improve this, so stay tuned for that as well.
Now to actually do the detection, we'll need our trained neural network model. And I'm just using a YOLO 8N trained on a whole bunch of Victorian bird species. If you want to know more about training and deploying your own model for the AI camera, I've got a whole separate video where I talk about that. So you can check that out as well. So for the first test of this, I just mounted it to a tree in my front yard and hoped that some birds might appear. Unfortunately, it didn't look like there was going to be much activity. So I had to take a more proactive approach. Luckily for me, the birds around our neighborhood are pretty used to people and you can get relatively close. And once we confirmed that it was working properly in the wild, I again set up the camera in my front yard and used some seed to try and entice some birds to appear in front of the camera. And after leaving it set up for about a week, I was able to observe these three magpies, which seem to show up every morning at about 8am, have a bit of a feed, and then leave for the rest of the day to go about their bird activities. And they didn't show up at any other time of the day, so they must have moved on, which is just a little demo to show how we could use this device for ecological monitoring or data collection reasons. The code running on this at the moment is pretty basic. It's basically just a hacked version of the demo code for the IMX500 from the Raspberry 2 camera repo but I am working on a more comprehensive and user-friendly code base for not just this camera, but also the original wildlife monitor as well. So basically it's constantly streaming the detection information from the camera. And once it detects a high enough confidence detection, it will save the image and log the detection to a little USB that I've got in there. And at the end of the day, I can take the USB out, plug it into my computer and see the results we've got. So that's just a basic overview of this device. If you want a more detailed step-by-step -step tutorial on how exactly you can build this yourself, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.